Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be painting with rainbows to create some hair in the background. So I'm starting in my craft journal and I'm just sealing the page. Um, I'm not sealing the entire page but I'm putting down a layer of gel medium and then painting over uh, this collage piece from Scrap FX. Now this is called a contour drawing, it's all in one line. And it's very sort of abstracty, but I had this idea that I could put it in here and create some hair. So I've sealed over the entire page, and I actually used a vintage coloured um, gel medium. It just has a bit of a tint, brown tint to it, so it kept that sort of crafty look. It really doesn't matter if you use clear or not, you're going to get exactly the same technique. When I'd finished um, putting everything in, you can see I'm just using a rainbow effect colours and I'm using a large um, paintbrush and creating my rainbow stripes. Now this is a technique that was inspired by Claire Stead, who's an amazing um, UK artist, um, goes by um, Art Journal Love on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, she does a lot of these types of rainbows in her work. Now you notice when I'm doing it, I'm putting the colours in exactly the same spot. I'm not putting out very much because it does. You really don't need very much to do this. Um, and I am putting my paintbrush in the same place every time, so you get that um, real rainbow effect. For any very old crafters, well, I say very old. But I'm one of these crafters, and I don't think of myself as old. But um, D. Goring, um, he used to be a crafter for um, Ranger. He used to do with inks and using special sponges similar techniques so um, it's a it's a fun one to play with so you can see I'm just using up the rest of my um, paint and having fun in my used up journal as well I didn't want to waste anything as I was working so I'm just adding some extra stripes in so this will be another page I'll use at some stage um, you can see I'm trying to line up the colours. They start to get a little bit blended, but that's okay. It all works out in the end. Um, but the big secret to this is you really don't need that much paint. Now, I've used my Dina Wakely colours because they make great rainbows, but any colours you've got in acrylic paint, that will work really, really well. Now, once I've got my hair there, I was thinking, what am I going to do with the face? Um, and I wanted to, while the obviously rainbow hair is quite important to this piece, um, it looked a bit odd on this face without the face being painted too so I decided I would go in and paint the face using my usual technique of using weird and wonderful colours so I'm going in with this um, primary set of colours basically um, a yellow, a magenta and a, um, a turquoise colour if you think of uh, the printing colours you use in your printing ink it's basically cyan, magenta and yellow and I'm using the yellow as my highlight, I'm using the magenta as my mid-tone, and I'm using my turquoise as my darker tone. And I'm just thinking about where the shadows would be. Now, these are all very randomish, but you do know that the top of your nose, the top of your cheeks, um, top of your chin, and part of your neck is going to get more light, so that's obviously where the yellow is going to be. Um, round your hair, not necessarily the way she's looking, it tends to be a little bit darker and obviously sort of under your neck and so on so if you think about where your shadows are going if you're really stuck for stuff like this go and watch some youtube um videos on contouring makeup contouring i find that really helps where you see them put the really darks is usually where you're going to put your your dark shadows and so on so um for those of you who are good at contouring this probably is a very easy process for you if you feel you've been a bit heavy-handed like i have here and got rid of some of the colors just put it back in again whether you use your finger or your paintbrush it's all good so once i've got my face you can kind of see now that looks a little bit more balanced up um as it's got um similar tones to the background colors now i'm just going in these are the tim holtz watercolor pencils and I'm just using those as a little bit of extra shading. I am really scribbly when I do this. I'm not very precise. Um, I like the extra texture that it creates. So you can be very particular or you can be a little bit um, scribbly. If you've got 
Prismacolor pencils and so on, just use those. You don't have to use these watercolor pencils. Um, you can see the real scribbles happening now. Um, if you've got your scribble sticks and so on, they all work the same. So whatever mediums you've got, just have a go. Um, and it's just adding that extra texture and color and shading over the top. You've got that base coat, so you've got a pretty good idea of where the colors are going to go and you're just adding a little bit extra to it. Um, and it's lots of fun. And for those people who are a bit unsure about drawing faces and so on, if you're drawing over the top of um, a piece like this, it really, really helps. Once I finished, I went in with my Stabilo Oil Pencil in black and just traced over the lines of that original contour drawing because they had got a little bit lost. So you can see by just putting that black back on there, it just pushes the, page, uh, the face out of the page again. I also ended up putting some lines within her hair, but I didn't really like it, so I wiped it off. Now, this is one of the good things about using a Stabilo Oil Pencil is the fact it is water soluble. So with a wet wipe, I was able just to wipe off the bits I want. It got a bit mucky at some stage but it does all come off in the end. The fact that my page was also completely sealed at the beginning um, helped that to wipe off because the um, stabilo oil couldn't go into the craft paper which is actually quite absorbent. Finally as I usually do I added a quote to this page and I'm using these new pens that I got um, at the time, they're not new anymore. Um, these are the Life of Colour um, Chrome Effect pens. So this is a silver, it really has a mirror effect. You can see how bright it is, almost looks white on the page. Um, very, very metallic. It reminds me a lot of the old Krylon pens we used to get, the Krylon leafing pens, sort of got a similar effect, but this is a mirror effect. So in the US or UK, you might be able to get your hands more easily on those. Um, in Australia, I know Natalie May sells these chrome pens and you can get them from Life of Colour directly, I think, as well. So, um, they're, they're, I was really impressed. They come in a pack of three. You've got the silver, gold and a bronzy colour and they're all very metallic. Just going through again with my white pen, which looks a bit funny because it looks like I've written white, um, just giving it a little bit of a highlight putting in a little bit of extra white, um, some extra highlights in, just little bits. And again, I'm using my finger to sort of control if I've been a bit too heavy handed just to sponge some of it off. So here's a close up, you can see the texture, you can see the color, you can see where the um, watercolor pencils have sort of gone into the background to give that extra shading and depth to the page and how bright those colors are um, when you sort of zoom in them. You can also see where that with the tipping of the page where those highlights hit. So I hope you have a go at playing with rainbows and rainbow stripes. It's lots and lots of fun. You can obviously use them for anything you want. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.